Hey guys, welcome to the channel. My name is Jake from Cryonaut Media and Cryogen, and right now we're using Ableton Live 10's beta. If you've been following along, you'll know that there's a few new devices that are being introduced, and we're going to go over them right now. So, welcome to the third video in this Ableton Live 10 device series. Uh, previously, we've covered the pedal as well as the echo devices and how awesome they are for creating interesting sounds and just giving movement and, and just interest to your sounds. Well, today we're going to go over the drum bus. Uh, this is really good for using on your drums, obviously, but you can use it just on instrumental tracks as well and get some interesting sounds from like the boom and the transients especially. For now, I just want to show this on the drums real quick, so let me get something together for you real fast. So this is the little drum beat that I have real quick. Pretty simple, nothing too fancy. Uh, that's what it looks like right there. Um, now real quick, one thing I'd like to point out with the drum racks, they've changed this down here. There's no longer like a fade or anything to it. They just have a full on ADSR envelope for each sample. So that's awesome and gives you so much more control. Uh, now, onto the drum bus. Uh, you have this drive section right here, and then trim, compressor, crunch and dampening, and then transients, and then a boom with the frequency and the K, uh, and then just a relative note. And then over here, you have the output slider, and then the dry wet over here. So drive uh, is a lot similar to the pedal we had earlier, it just adds some drive, some sort of distortion, saturation to it, and you can choose between soft, medium, and hard. Uh, so a soft obviously is just a little bit, hard is a lot. So you can kind of hear, if you want like really distorted drums, you want to do that. Uh, soft just adds a little bit to the top end. You may not even really hear it very much, but it's adding some higher um, harmonic frequencies to your sounds. Uh, now down here is the trim. And this is, again, something very unique uh, to plugins that I don't really see very often. It's the same thing as the input knob on uh, like Echo or something. This turns down the incoming signal. So again, if you have a lot of stuff going on um, or you just want to be able to turn down how much it's affecting the sound, you want to turn down the trim. Um, because again, you're adding drive, you're adding things to the sound, you're going to make it louder and louder. And if you're distorting before you even get to this plugin, you need to turn down the trim so that that incoming signal is lower instead of trying to just reduce the output, but it's still distorting within the plugin and everything. Um, that's all behind the scenes. You may not really know what's going on, but that's kind of how it works. Um, down here you have a compressor, and this just compresses the sound before it gets to the, this plugin. Um, you can't really control it at all, but basically if you have a really dynamically wide sound before, this will compress it so that's a little bit more even, um, which just makes it easier to, you know, change all of these different settings in here and have it sound good across the board and not just for your kick as it goes through or, or whatever you have going on. So now into this middle section, um, you have the crunch, which kind of adds more harmonic content to the highs. Uh, and then the dampening, which at this certain frequency will dampen the sound a little bit, kind of lower the signal of this frequency range. Um, if you have too much happening at a certain frequency, it's too loud with your cymbals maybe or your snare is too much this will help kind of calm that sound down without actually eqing it specifically this will be a little bit more of a general feel to it the transients will either emphasize more or kind of take le more emphasis away from the transient sounds which is the like the hitting of the drums so when it actually hits that little snap or crack sound if you want to get more of that or if you want to take that away and smooth out the whole sound that's what this is going to be good for so with crunch, 
you can really hear that in the hi-hat sound of that the open hi-hat it's a lot more noticeable when you have this turned up when you turn it down it's more in the background Uh, and then dampening. Uh, sort of like a low pass filter, but only bringing it down, a, not quite as much as a whole filter. It's just lowering it, everything above this frequency. So now you can have kind of your kick and your snare or clapping kind of sounds sound pretty much normal, but then all the cymbals are toned down a bit. And now the transients. This is where things get really cool. So with it turned up like that, you can really hear the, the, the thump of the kick, the little attack of the snare and all the hi-hats. There's a lot of clicking going on. And for certain loops or certain drum sounds, this is really good. And it adds a little bit more of that attack kind of sound. It gives it more of an intense, aggressive kind of feel. Now as we lower it, it's going to all smooth out and you'll hear less of that and more of the tail end, which is a lot better for more calming kind of drums or if you just want it to be more in the background and you want the other sounds to be forefront, then you can use that. So now it sounds more dull, like thud and thumping kind of sounds. Um, so that can be really good too, especially if you use this on if you have a different channel for all your drums, or if you have multiple groups of drums, you can have one set that's a lot more with a lot more transient, and another set with a lot less transients, and they'll kind of complement each other that way. So now we have the the boom section over here. Uh, this this kick happens to have a decent amount of bass, but if we wanted more, or if you have a certain drum set that doesn't have very good bass to it, you can use the boom for that. So you can hear now we're not distorting anymore. I've brought it back down to it so it's just below that level. Um, but it's definitely adding a much lower end. And then you can adjust the frequency here uh, and then see which note you're playing right here. You can see that changes as we move this frequency. So that lets you really tune this to your actual song and make it sound perfect and fit in with everything. Uh, and then the decay, you know, how much of a tail do you want it to have? So that helps you sculpt your sound a bit more. Uh, and then of course you can always adjust the volume over here. How much of this do you want going out? And then the dry wet, how much of the original signal do you want versus this modified signal? So uh, can be very good for parallel sort of sounds. Uh, you, you hear that on parallel compression a lot, but if you want half of your original sound and then half of this sound, you get this extra modified sound, but it's not overwhelming and it's not the entire sound. You still have the original dry sound coming through, which can be very useful um, just to add a little bit more to your sounds and have a different kind of layering going on. So that's the drum bus. Um, overall, really useful and probably should be on all of your drum channels, or at least the groups if you have them because it just can do so much. And even if you don't do a lot, it helps you with a little bit of like fine tuning your sound, you know? And um, this compressor will help bring the sounds together and then you can modify all the sounds together with these different channels. Instead of having to each channel like modify it or each individual sample, you know, add effects to each one to get it right. This will help with your overall sound and help it more feel more, uh, more of a group, more solidified. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Go ahead and hit that like if you did like it. And go ahead and subscribe too to go to see more Ableton Live 10 videos. Um, I'm trying to put them out pretty consistently for you. So in the comments below, let me know how excited you are for this drum bus plugin. Is it something you're going to use? Is it something you don't think you'll use at all? Uh, let me know. And also let me know what the thing is that you're most looking forward to in Ableton Live 10. So thanks for watching again, guys. I'll see you next time.